So Capcom is one of the more well-known video game companies for making beloved classics such as Street Fighter, Monster Hunter, Devil May Cry, and of course, Resident Evil. I don't know what's going on. But how many of you know that they also created a series where you play as a defense attorney and you have to save people from death at the hands of the legal system with your words? Ow, words hurt. And despite numerous attempts by the financial team begging the higher ups, please boss, you're losing money. Each game is selling worse than the other one. I don't care. Give me more. Lawyer man. <laughs> And so the series has numerous games that you know about, but what you probably didn't know is the downright crazy actual physical real products you could spend your hard-earned rupees on, all for the lawyer man to go. And I'm the perfect person for the job. As someone who got into the series in high school, when a friend told me to download a ROM on a site, which is definitely not an active site now, unless you want your computer to get STDs. Seriously, terrible... the viruses? And I tried out the game and thought, heh heh, funny lawyer game. Don't worry if you haven't played them, I won't be going into spoilers. But Ace Attorney has you defending pitiful clients who are accused of the horrible crime of murder. Like seriously, why did you have to kill him? He didn't do anything! And you got to investigate the crime scene, then interrogate the most absurd characters in court. All the while your flamboyant counterpart destroys your arguments with facts and logic. And also some BS. But in this video, I'm gonna take you through everything the franchise has to offer, because it's actually insane and I don't think most people know half of these things. It's not just the many games, including some baffling ones like... Mm. Oh my god, it's a British man! But also things like the Ace Attorney Cafe, where you can buy food themed on the characters, or how there exist slot machines that show amazing visuals of the games while they suck all the money out of your pants, virtual reality where you become lawyer man, games that clearly shouldn't be games, damn wedding rings based on the characters, babe, will you marry me? Oh my god, a Miles Edgeworth wedding ring! So is that a yes? You know. To even this physical crossover where no images of the inside exist online, but it features Ace Attorney crossing over with Monster Hunter and Kabu Trader Shun, a video game on the Nintendo DS where you play the stock market. No, I'm not joking. This is real. I don't understand any of this, but I'm rich. Hang on. So yes, if you too want to be a stock trader and learn about the weirdest things this stupid series has given us, then join me as we look back at the beginning in 2001. Yes, the year where the first family movie premiered, and in Japan, Ace Attorney released on the... Game Boy. The series started out on a single screen, no backlight brick. The pixel so tiny he didn't even know if he got the not guilty verdict. But then in 2005, it came out on the Nintendo DS with them two screens. That's a bit cheeky, in it. So the game stars Phoenix Wright, who is a rookie lawyer and has to defend his friend from school on the charge of murder. And it has some wacky characters like Maya Faye, your assistant, who is a big nerd and can also turn into other people with spirit channeling, which is actually not the weirdest thing about the series. Her sister, who. Uh, um, Boobs. and your rival Miles Edgeworth, the prosecutor, who may or may not be the reason Phoenix became a lawyer in the first place. I think the word rhymes with, hey, Bombay? This thing on my chest is great for blowing my nose. And a police officer who is more like a helpless puppy than a lumbering detective. Ace Attorney 1 is such a great introduction to the franchise since you start at the beginning of Phoenix Wright's journey as a lawyer. Plus, they made a special bonus case for the game's release on the DS, which has a playtime that makes it feel like its own game. Except it's disgusting. What do you mean you're serving trial a bite? Tastes like chicken. Then one year later, yes, Capcom started the sports game yearly trend of releasing the same game each year with slight tweaks. You got Justice for All, the sequel, which was shorter. No, not that. I mean, it had four cases instead of five. And you meet Maya's cousin, and a new prosecutor since Edgeworth pissed off the bitchville, while Phoenix becomes a jealous ex, and the new prosecutor... She's nice. Oh, she's got a whip. That surely isn't legal? Also, this game is extremely horny. I mean, first they censor one of the lobsters because, well... And then you have this Bride of Pearl. Capcom, what the fuck? Then two years later, they released the final game in the trilogy that the creator, Shu Takumi, wanted to make. Trials and Tribulations, my absolute favorite game of all time, which was like the Super Smash Brothers of lawyer games. Nearly every character returning, and some new ones like this prosecutor who has the coolest design ever. Also, he's addicted to coffee. 
Personally, I'm more of a tea guy. And these three would be ported to everything like the Wii and the PC in 2005. Yes, in Japan, you could buy these games on the PC Bruh. back then. But now the series is so accessible with the trilogy release that has updated visuals and buyable on every console possible. Yes, even the LG fridge. Okay, no, not really. You know, they probably would have released it on the fridge if they could have, because in 2005, they released it on the phones. Yes, phones. In 2005! This is how phones looked like then, this is so quaint! But of course, re-releasing games that people played is not a good business strategy in the long term. So you know what's next? More sequels! With a new protagonist! Wait, what? So Apollo Justice is the fourth game, and the creator went to Capcom. Okay, I'll write your damn game. But no more Phoenix, his story is done. Wrapped up neatly in the third game. But Capcom begged and pleaded. Oh, I'll be your friend. No. Oh, you're mean. So Takumi gave in, and instead set the game seven years in the future. Made a new lawyer, and brought Phoenix back like Capcom wanted. As a hobo. He loves to drink grape juice. Hey, I mean, calling it juice ain't gonna change the alcohol percentage. And he also has a daughter, who's a magician. Shoot, Takumi, you madman. Now, despite all these shocking revelations, I actually really, 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 really like this game. Yeah, so you start out as the new lawyer who has the best banter with Trucy and acts more like the straight man in the comedic world. Like, dude, stop trying to act cool. You're an old man. And it did feel like a weird reset on the series because despite seven years in the future, most characters were all new. It didn't have much linking it to the third game, but it did still sell fairly well for a game about, well, lawmen. Oh, then we had to wait a long time for the next mainline game, which was the first one I was hyped for since I joined the series after 4. And when I say hyped, I mean hyped. I mean cracked out on cereal sugar. Like I would non-stop check daily for news on it while on the bus to uni bugging my friend like, hey, did you see? They announced a new character. I'm literally screaming right now. Who the heck are you? And this game was... Weird. It was the first mainline one without Shu, and I personally think it shows it just feels very different to the other games. Now putting Phoenix back in the driver's seat, giving us punished Apollo, and another new defense attorney with Athena, and yes, another new prosecutor. I mean, in the previous one we also got Clavier, a musician pretty boy, but continuing the trend we got another new one, who was a condemned murderer, brought out of jail just to prosecute against us. But even a convicted murderer still got a job to do and duties to perform. They also did this thing where they added DLC to the game, being a brand new case you had to pay extra money for, where you had to defend a killer whale. They say jump the shark, but how about the frickin' whale? Also, did you know this was Capcom's first attempt at 3D? And if you see the beta screenshots... I ain't sleeping tonight! And so I honestly thought that was it. Dual Destinies basically achieved its expected sales, and I thought surely there would be no more. But oh no, we got another one with Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, where the marketing pit Phoenix against Apollo, and I mean they went all out for this game, actually improving the 3D models tenfold with motion capture, having Apollo take his own cases, while bringing back fan favorite Maya, who just vanished in 4, but she's here, with another new prosecutor, plus tons of returning characters, and, and it sold the worst out of the six. Yep, with all that marketing, it sold even less. Despite it, in my opinion, being one of the best Ace Attorney games, at least better than Solid Snake here. And more confusing is that we are probably still gonna get Ace Attorney 7. How do I know that? I don't. But as long as the world keeps turning, Ace Attorney will get more games. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, I'm complaining, but it just doesn't make any sense. They keep making the damn games. And speaking of damn games, I mean, we had Stock Trader game. I don't know why Damn Simulator isn't a thing. But we have more with spin-offs, starting with the Investigation series, two games based on the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth. Because yeah, being pretty wasn't enough for this old man. He had to go and star in his own games, where you can walk around with a new assistant, who is my favorite character ever. And also Dick is back! Dick. The games are way more unique since no courtroom. Edgeworth wins the battles with words and chess. Bruh, bishop to e7, king me. <laughs> And the sequel, which never left Japan as of this date, but has an amazing fan translation patch where fans translated the whole game themselves. And I'm glad they did, because I got to see her. And Jazz. Man. But if you thought making two whole games on a pretty boy playing chess was weird, given how the games don't sell, what if you had a similar game do a crossover? And here it is, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. And no, it's not a fighting game. I mean, how can a lawyer fight? I, I will be talking about the fighting game uh, later on in the video. 
So Professor Layton is a series about a British man being British, which means he drinks tea and solves puzzles. His games were really popular on the DS in the 2000s, which was around the time uh, Phoenix started to get popular, so naturally a crossover was likely. No, this isn't natural, these games don't do that well, why is this a thing? Oh no, don't worry, I'm not complaining, I actually really love this Layton game, where it has Phoenix and Maya visiting Britain from America to learn about lore, but end up getting trapped in a magical world with Layton. And Phoenix has the biggest American accent, I swear. Ah, uh, cheers, partner, for the Outback Ribs. Terrible, just terrible. But can a guy get a few last Z's in? This game is pretty much like the Leighton games with the puzzles and the Britishness. What the blazes? But you get some trials where Phoenix has to defend someone with multiple witnesses. It's so chaotic. Also, Phoenix is probably better as a baker than a lawyer. Also, why the heck is Miles British? Has the cat got your tongue? And then we reach the last of the similar games with the great Ace Attorney, which features Phoenix Wright's ancestor in Victoria. Victoria era England just fighting systematic racism. And also who the heck are you? Wait, are you Sherlock Holmes? The game actually took a long time to come over West, the whole system in fact, possibly because the Sir Arthur Coda Doyle estate and how copyrighted Sherlock Holmes is. I mean, just swap the letters around. Oh, that's what they did. Mr. Sholmes. Well, these two games are fun in their own right, and also, I don't know why this dude just makes me laugh. He sounds like he's saying, gee willikers, we traded system has a problem. I think my brain just snapped. But we are finally done, right? No more Ace Attorney. That's not the end. Oh god, please kill me. That's right, Ace Attorney had crossover into other games as skins and characters, like with Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3, where Phoenix Wright is a playable fighter complete with an amazing gimmicky moveset where he picks up items and the judge comes in to whack the enemy and his strongest attack is literally you convicting the opponent mid-battle. Then you have him appearing in the now offline Project X Zone 2, alongside characters like Lucina and Kiryu Kazuma from the Yakuza series. Yes, this is real. And now there's no official way to get the game since it was removed from the eShop, but I won't tell if you don't. It's just so weird seeing Phoenix, a literal lawyer, interact with these other gaming icons who are more adept at fighting. I mean, Kiryu is amazed at Phoenix's ability to fight with words. Why would you remove this game? But if seeing Phoenix trying to defend Yakuza wasn't horrifying enough, how about this? Yep, skins for Monster Hunter Explore, and this is gonna get you more sales? How? No, don't do it again with the other Monster Hunter. Hey viewers, do you like books? And manga? What the f*** is manga? It's Japanese comics you want cultured! So yeah, Ace Attorney has most Japanese properties, has official manga that has the crew partake in original new stories written by various writers. I have two of the translated ones, one of them for Phoenix and one for Miles. And notably, the Phoenix one is bigger. So does that mean Phoenix is bigger than Miles? Talking about their phallics. And I just love the blurb on this. One name strikes fear into the hearts of evildoers everywhere. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. And they just have the characters and random stories like Phoenix wanted to get better so he does spirit channeling training and ends up getting possessed to them finding a lost kitten, Miles fighting a bear, to Maya going N Namaste, I'm channeling a curry master from India to make delicious curry. Okay then. Then there's also an official comic that is more structured with cases, like one being a horror story where they investigate a house with a giant. Yeah, nah, nah. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. I personally think these non-translated investigation ones I have are more fun, no bias or anything, because they seem to have more funny faces. I mean, I can't read it, what else am I gonna look for? Also, Gumshoe seems really excited to break up riots. That area's gonna take a big dump. And if having books in a series where you read 100% of the time isn't enough for you, how about art books? All those dead trees. So these are released after each game and usually go in depth on the making of said game. With interviews by the development team and this would be fascinating if I could read it. Yet only a few were translated into English officially, like this one I have, and it was so cool seeing all the sketches for the designs, how so many will never see the light of day. I mean, they could be their own characters in any future game. And I kind of wish Phoenix now had a chin strap goatee. Oh, Edgeworth with this. And I guess since the games don't sell that well these days, I think I know how Capcom makes their money back. Merchandise. Oh dear lord, so much merchandise. Seriously, they have something for every occasion, often releasing them after themes like an anniversary or a train conducting thing. 
What? I mean, they have everything from a ruler, phone case, ceramic plate to eat your steel samurai curry, DS stylus pen with a giant finger, wine bottles to get drunk on, beam luggages to get arrested at airport security, lighters for kids to start smoking, just so many pens and random things and so many art styles, they all cost so much and it drives me so nuts! But you're so cute. It's actually insane how many products they have for every single game they release. And jewelry. So much jewelry. Oh, how much carrot is this diamond necklace? I'm sorry, madam. It's Ace Attorney themed jewelry. It's not worth anything. Oh no. Plus, you also have figurines with fans actually outvoting every single other fandom in the world for the next chibi figurines that aren't the deformities of Funko Pops to be Phoenix and Miles. But then you also have these official ones released as pre-orders with the games. I have the Miles one, and it's amazing. But I also have this fan-made one by someone in Japan of Kay Faraday, actually two of them, which is sold out now, meaning I possibly have the only two Kay figurines in the whole world. And they look like this! Gee, that's one fine-looking figurine. Why does it mine look like that? Yes, I know you can put it together with extra equipment, but I'm poor. I just spent all my money on figurines. Was it worth it? Yes. Then how about this official Ace Attorney themed toilet paper? Or a solid gold tablet that cost $1,300? Then you also have the marketable plushies that I still haven't opened because I'm hoping they'll rise in value. As someone who played Kapu Trader, I make all the right decisions. This is all your fault! Then, like I said, they release official art of the characters dressed up real nice. Then they release even more merch based on the designs. Am I going insane? This is so much merch! But they do look snazzy. You got festivals, fancy outfits, orchestral outfits, train, will you stop with the trains? Like you think, oh wow, this is classy. I will admire the artwork. The characters look so good. But then, bam, here you go, keychains, hey, hey, get your keychains here. Handkerchiefs, here you go, sir. Madam, you look like you could use your own Edgeworth tissue box for all those nights crying because a man like him doesn't exist. And then there's the food. Yes, food based on the characters. Yes, Maya Faye has been processed into a drink. Also nice work on the Apollo spiky hair. But how does it taste? It's just insane to think that they release one artwork and then bam, they can sell you all this merchandise on that artwork and food that may or may not knock you out and rob you. Oh well, they can't do anything worse. Like a two season anime on the first three games that is so badly animated just to make the most merchandise the franchise has ever seen. Capcom! God, I wish this thing didn't exist. <laughs> So in 2016, they released an anime of the first two games, then a second season two years later on the third game. And apart from killing my enjoyment of replaying the games each year, they managed to mess with the game's story as well. And straight after they began churning the money printing machines with the merch based on the anime designs, you got keychains, bowls, pins, keychains, wait, why so many keychains? I swear it would be so easy to spot an Ace Attorney fan in Japan. Just find the dude with the most crap on their bag. And of course they released the manga based on the anime which is based on the game. Which is based on WHY DO WE NEED THIS?! It just feels like the anime was made as cheap as possible to make the most cheap as possible merchandise to make the most money. But you know what else makes money? Phone games. Did you guys not have phones? So Ace Attorney, as the peak mobile game of the 2000s, went on to be featured in many collabs with other phone games. And I don't know Capcom, you could have picked a bigger franchise if you wanted promotion. But granted, the art for them is amazing. But here's a fun thing, you don't actually need to get the games to get those artworks. Oh my god! And not really a mobile game, but there's also this browser one called Onomusha Soul that had three Ace Attorney characters appear in it. And I only mention it because they designed them with such intricate outfits, and one of them is Kay Faraday, who isn't forgotten, unlike in the modern games. But did you know there's actually a Capcom crossover mobile card game? And it had an Ace Attorney theme this year. Yeah. And they had a murder storyline with a full release, and official art on even the most obscure characters? And no one cared? It was kind of disappointing because it felt like they put a ton of effort into this. But I guess, you know, card games on mobile phones kind of put people off. But you know, one thing that really put people off, because most of us couldn't get it, is exclusive Japanese Ace Attorney stuff like a whole amusement park. <gasps> It's Disney World! So not Disney World, but Joy Polis. Which sounds like someone injected you with a disease of joy. I'm so happy. 
It's an amusement park owned by Sega, who somehow let Capcom make two Ace Attorney themed attractions. Yes, one for Phoenix and one for Miles. And they feature special cases written by Ace Attorney writers with official art on each case. They are apparently set in an alternate timeline and function sort of like an escape room, where you watch videos in person on the case and find booths to work through it. I think the most fascinating thing about this whole thing is that they are treated as proper cases with their own official art and gameplay, and even whole scenarios which we'll never see, like the manager of Joy Pollitt's being murdered and we gotta find out who did it. Really, murdering the manager? I think Capcom wanted to bump off Sega and take over the whole thing. <laughs> I'm kidding, look, here's Gumshoe saying how much he loves Sonic. Yes, Sonic is real, he appeared in Ace Attorney. Does that mean Ace Attorney will turn out like Sonic? Oh no! <laughs> but if you thought these games weren't lawyer enough, then how about these ones? But there's a catch. They were only released in Japan and we never got them. Fun! Gyakuten Saiben Jiten, which translates to Encyclopedia, which is literally you reading about the cases in the first three games, and the more you read, you unlock things like cinematics, credit sequences, and the sprites for each character. So yeah, you're reading about the cases in a game that's mostly about reading! Hmm, makes me want to gamble all the money I made stock trading. Well, we have the game for you! For me? Yes, in 2007, you could, on your phone, play poker with the Ace Attorney characters in the courtroom. Yes, gambling in a legal building. At least it was back when there were no microtransactions, so you couldn't actually lose real money, unlike me. And then you got Yakuten Saiban Hanafuda, which is a Japanese card game, but you get to verse three Ace Attorney characters, and Mio seems real interested in destroying me. Then you have a puzzle game for the phones in 2011. I'm sorry, a competitive puzzle phone game, and you had to verse other players to push their bar to being guilty using items from the series. Now that's just crazy because who would pick Winston Payne as the character? Then you had a spin-off called Ito no Kogiri Test, which featured Gumshoe and you taking a test to become his subordinate. And also a test featuring Phoenix Wright. Man, I'm sure these flew off the shelves back in the day. But you know what did make money? Gambling! No, not that poker thing. A physical gambling machine in Japan that has some of the best anime cutscenes the series has ever seen. So pachinko machines are huge, uh, similar to slot machines here, as gambling for money is illegal in Japan. But at pachinko machines, you win balls to be exchanged for money in another building as some sort of crazy legal loophole that works. Because hey, in 2015, it was reported it generated more money than Las Vegas, Macau, and Singapore combined. Of course, Capcom wanted some of that. But why Ace Attorney? There seem to be two versions by two different companies, and I mean, my god, is this insane. They use original models and animations made specifically for the machine that look way better than, you know, the actual anime with so many bright lights and noises. This is overstimulation. But it's Ace Attorney. So I love it. And it's weird because I found out someone managed to get an app to play it on their phones, but then I couldn't find anything more on it other than a rabbit hole that led to a French website that had comics of the characters and pixel art for Sure, it makes sense. And what clearly makes sense is for them to make Ace Attorney in VR. Are you as broken as I am right now? Yes, only in Japan they had an original case where in a mall, you and a friend can both investigate a crime scene in VR. And of course there's official art for it, what do you expect? Capcom could announce Ace Attorney condoms and I'm sure they'll make official art for it. But you know what's better than seeing lawyers in VR? Lawyers in real life. I mean, the hair looks good, I'll give him that. So this seems to be a pretty common thing in Japan, but most franchises receive a stage play, which is an original case that features a theater group acting out the case. And not just one. They've had multiple of these throughout the years, often doing the same one again with new actors, and the cases are all new and unique. And, if, yeah, and you know, official art, there's official art for each case, okay? Someday this would be amazing to experience. But you know what I can experience? Actors in the live-action Ace Attorney movie. I'm so tired. Yes, Ace Attorney has a live-action movie that covers the first game, loosely. And I mean loosely because they took some creative liberties with it. Violence and coarse language. What, does Phoenix swear in it or something? I will master debate Liam O'Brien. It's actually pretty enjoyable in a darker, grittier, Myers tour than Phoenix sort of way. Yeah, I'm done. That's it, I've gone insane trying to think about all this. No, I'm, no I'm, not, I'm not doing any more. Like, I'm not going to tell you about how there's a Korean port of Ace Attorney that has the characters with the Korean objections. Yes. Or how there's a furry fan game that seems so obscure. Do you really want to know? You don't want to know. And I hope you enjoyed this crazy look into my favorite series ever. Yes, I know I complain about the merch, but honestly, if it's somehow funding more games in the series, counteracting the low sales, I mean, sure, hey, go nuts. There's probably one Capcom boss who was like, 
Hey, shoe buddy, make some more Ace Attorney. But, but I, I don't, they, they don't make money, sir. Hey, don't worry, shoe, my man. We'll just whip up some more art to make some more merch. That should fund a new trilogy, right? My son loves Ace Attorney. I want Franziska to whip me. Jesus H. Christ, son. You're messed up. It's just insane how many products there are for the series. And then I never see the games doing well sales wise. I mean, I guess it's because you have to play most of them in order and they keep making more of them. So it's more harder for newer fans to get into the series. But then again, the trilogy is on nearly every console available. So you can join if you want to, maybe. I don't know. I think it's all right. And yes, finally, I've done it. The all encompassing Ace Attorney video. I'm just such a big fan, this series means so much to me. Like, people are nerds for the weirdest things. And of course I had to be the nerd for the lawyer game simulator. But that's all the time I have. I am being indicted in a tax fraud pyramid scheme. Don't worry, I'll be getting Phoenix Wright to defend me. Hey! What do you mean Australian law is different to Japanese law? Look, I'm gonna pay you a lot of money, okay? I'm a stock trader. Anyway, how's your parents? I mean, uh, you never talk about them. Oh, that bad, huh? Oh, wait, and with her sister too? Oh, wow.